Um, so speaking of things that you shouldn't say out loud uh, to people, I'm going to keep that going and introduce my next guest, where I said something out loud to somebody that maybe I shouldn't have. Uh, I'd like to welcome my good friend from college. He's an amazing yeah. human being. Is Jonathan Wick Rimasinga Kuhn. Uh, so you might be wondering about my last name. I don't really have an ambiguous ethnic blend. Uh, clearly I'm a white dude. Uh, when my wife and I got married last year, we decided to combine our last names. Uh, so Wicker Wissinga, that's a Sri Lankan name. Kuhn, that's originally a German name. So kind of combining of two different cultures. We wanted to uh, celebrate that at our wedding as well. And so we wanted to add in, uh, her culture, you know, like I said, some Sri Lankan things. We want to incorporate that. In my culture, not so much German culture, you know, I guess I like sausage, I guess. And, uh, I do love beer. But for me, it's more my southern culture. I grew up in the south. I was born and raised in Alabama. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so we, we both wanted some things from both of our backgrounds at our wedding, at, at the ceremony and the reception. Um, and we also wanted food from both places at our wedding. You know, most of the time with wedding food, either you don't remember it or you're like, oh, this chicken's really dry. Do you think this is dry? Yeah, the chicken's really dry. <laughs> so we, we wanted our food to be so good, people were like, oh, this food is amazing. So we wanted like half southern barbecue, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, as well as half Sri Lankan food. Now, if you've never had Sri Lankan food before, I recommend that you remedy that as soon as possible. Uh, it has some similarities to Indian cuisine, uh, but it's a lot better. Uh, sorry for the Indian, it's true. Uh, so we wanted half and half, and the idea was like people get half of one, half the other. But the logistics were we needed one table set up with all the barbecue and one with the Sri Lankan food. But no problem, you fill up half your plate one place, half the other. But we knew that some people might only want food from one place, and you know that's totally fine. Maybe some people literally think that black pepper is really spicy. Uh, that's my mother. Um, maybe some Sri Lankan people are like, oh, free Sri Lankan food, I don't have to spend all day cooking it, please load up my plate. Um, so, you know, that's totally fine, but the servers were preparing for people to go to both tables, so they need to tell the servers, oh, I'm only getting this food, so please fill up my plate. And obviously the guests needed to know that they needed to tell the server. So that was one of many messages that we asked the MC at our wedding to convey to everybody. Our friend, David Marriott, <laughs> graciously agreed to be the MC at our wedding. <laughs> For us, it was a no-brainer. I mean, why wouldn't you go with, with one of the world's top 10 best HQ hosts? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to lock that down. Um, so, you know, he, uh, he uh, announced our bridal party. You know, he announced us as a married couple. And he had to do one of these announcements about the food logistics. Uh, but we know he's a funny guy. He does improv. He's going to lighten it up. It's not going to be a dry, boring <laughs> announcement. And that's totally fine. Uh, quick backstory, and you're going to wonder, how is this related at all to what's about to happen? But we'll get there. Um, <laughs> prior to the wedding, you know, in the previous year and a half or so, there was this election. You all probably heard about it. Um, you know, and my, made my family and I have a lot of discussions we hadn't really had before, a lot of conversations about <laughs> politics. I'm a pretty liberal guy. You know, I had some very different opinions on Mr. Trump, maybe, than they did. Um, so some discussions, maybe some arguments. And a lot was said, ultimately we realized, you know, neither of us are going to change anybody's mind, so we don't need to talk about it all the time. Uh, but, you know, a lot had been said. But David didn't know about this. <laughs> so, David gets his announcement about the food, and he's saying, oh, and you go get half of this and half of that, and, you know, enjoy both things. He's like, but if you only want one type of food, you need to let the people know. So, if you're like, oh, what's that weird food over there? I don't want any of that. I only want barbecue. You know, let them know. My wife and I are at our sweetheart's table, and we're like, I might have gone in a different direction with that, but like, okay, that's totally fine. So he continues, like, or if you're like, oh, I think the South should have stayed seceded from the Union. Well, I only know what you want to do. Let them know. And my wife and I are like, ah, a secession joke. <laughs> Too soon. Right? Like, so, I'm like, okay, it's still fine. And then he concludes by saying, like, oh, but really, everybody should get food from both places, you know, unless you're, like, weirdly racist. <laughs> now, any of us ever, if you have a, a wedding speech or toast coming up, a free piece of advice, just don't say the word racist. <laughs> <laughs> or racism, or race wars, you know. Maybe that makes it in your first draft, but I'd say edit that out. <laughs> yeah. So we could see at the tables that my family were at, you know, they were a little upset by this. Some of them were offended. One of my family members actually talked to David later and let him know, hey, some people were offended. To David's credit, he went and talked to them and, you know, apologized. 
Uh, one of my family members thought he should have made a public apology, you know, really just to ride that thing out. Um, another family member asked me, like, did you tell him to say that? Um, you know, and that really bothered me because it's my family, I love them, they were gracious to come all the way out from Alabama to Temecula for our wedding, you know, I wouldn't do that to them. Uh, but if I had wanted to do that to them, you know, I know them really well. It would have been eviscerating. <laughs> I didn't do that. So we kind of smoothed things over, but it wasn't quite the same. They were kind of just sitting at their tables, you know, not, you know, not fully enjoying themselves. And we had a live band. It was a lot of fun. Uh, they had this big uh, repertoire of music you could choose from. My wife and I spent hours painstakingly choosing which songs to pick. And, you know, we only remembered three songs they played the whole night. And the only reason I remember two of those three is you could choose two songs for them to learn for your wedding reception to perform. And so my wife, she went with the timeless classic, Mbop by Hanson. <laughs> <laughs> and all kidding aside, it was awesome. People really got into that. Um, and then I had to make a choice. And I took a long time trying to decide. And really, the whole time, I was just kind of running away from the obvious, the inevitable. And I kept, oh, I want to think of something I, I can't choose. So I came back. I'm like, OK, fine. You win. Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> so the time of the evening comes, that familiar guitar twang. Now, 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 now. And that's as far into the song as it got before all my family leapt up from their tables and rushed to the dance floor. I've never seen them that collectively excited about anything before. And they're dancing and they're singing, you know, Sweet Home Alabama. And they're adding their own twist to it by then chanting, Roll Tide Roll! <laughs> and then they get my wife's mom into it, and she's chanting, Roll Tide Roll! And she has no idea, no idea what it means. I mean, but really, do any of us have any idea what it means? <laughs> but so they really, you know, are having a great time, and I really think that Leonard Skinner kind of, you know, saved our wedding. Um, <laughs> not just that night, but we actually had an event the next day with some of my family, some of her family, and some friends. And I think if we hadn't had that magical musical moment the night before would have been a, a, the mood would have had a lot more tension in it the next day uh, David was not able to join us for the day after uh, ultimately that might have been for the best because uh, my southern fam didn't need him around anyhow uh, so uh, that's my story uh, as I was thinking about this story I realized that Oh my God, we forgot to give David a gift for being the MC for our wedding. So David, if you could oh, come up here. DVD of Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's charming and lovely as always. So. <laughs> <laughs>